Hello, my dear students. Uh, let us take uh, some more examples on uh, shear strength uh, uh, chapter. Uh, let us take this example. Uh, the table gives uh, observations for normal load and uh, maximum shear force for the specimens of uh, sandy clay tested in shear box, uh, 36 cm square in area under undrained conditions. Plot the failure uh, envelope for the soil and determine the values of apparent angles of uh, shearing resistance and the apparent cohesion okay here the table is given like this uh, the normal load and uh, maximum shear force is given the normal load 100 200 300 400 newton and uh, shear force uh, 110 150 193 and 235 so what we have to do you have to draw the uh, uh, graph showing normal stress versus uh, shear stress but here it is given normal load and shear load usually stress is load divided by area so area is 36 cm square so what you can do normal load divided by 36 that gives normal stress and shear stress is no, uh, this shear load divided by 36 that gives shear stress so like that also you can do or you can draw the graph shear load versus normal load and what is the answer you get that you have to divide it by 36 area that can also be done no problem okay any one method you can do here uh, what I have considered I have taken it from the textbook so here it is shown um, shear load uh, versus the normal load okay so whatever the normal load uh, just um, right here uh, draw the i mean scale according to the scale this is the normal load 100 200 300 400 so 50 100 150 200 till 400 and shear load 110 150 193 235 so 0 to 300 is considered okay now what we have to calculate you have to draw the graph okay from the graph you have to calculate what is the shearing resistance and uh this uh, apparent cohesion okay so how you can calculate um shearing resistance and the cohesion so first uh, draw the graph okay uh, so here uh, this is uh, 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 just uh, for 100 uh, it is 110 so for 100 that is 110 somewhere here okay uh, sorry and for uh, 200 this is 200 that is 152 here 152 then for 300 that is around 193 it is 200 193 and for 400 that is 235 so uh, draw the straight line join all the points okay from here to here that is c value and um, uh, this is you have to see the angle this angle uh, you will get phi is equal to 22 degree okay so now from the graph uh, or plot what we got phi u is equal to 22 degree and uh, why this is u because it is unread condition that's why phi u that is equal to 22 degree and cohesive force that is this uh, um, till here okay that is 50 and here somewhere here it is around 70 newton because this is in newton okay uh, 70 newton but uh, the cohesion is uh, newton uh, the unit of cohesion is newton per millimeter square and also now we have drawn the graph between the shear load and normal load so it should be supposed to be a shear stress and normal stress so whatever the answer you get divided by uh, that area so now for the uh, apparent cohesion that is cu that is equal to uh, 70 divided by 36 whatever the answer you get that divided by area so you'll get around 1.95 newton per centimeter square okay why this is centimeter square here 36 centimeter square so 1.95 newton per centimeter square or 19.5 kilonewton per centimeter square or 19.5 kilopascal 
okay kpa uh, see usually this uh, apparent no that is uh, for uh, the saturated condition okay otherwise you just write cohesion and friction but if it is a saturated condition we mention it as uh, apparent cohesion uh, so that's why it is called here apparent angles of shearing resistance and the apparent cohesion so you no need to worry about that it is almost similar to cohesion and friction only uh, okay, main thing you have to draw the graph that is shear stress versus normal stress. So, first only you can convert into stress, then whatever the answer you get directly, you will get in terms of Newton per uh, millimeter, Newton per centimeter square cohesion, or if it is in terms of uh, um, uh, this one load, uh, finally, whatever the answer you get, you have to um, uh, divide it by the area okay so i hope all of you understood let us take one more example um, a similar type of this that is a samples of compacted clean dry uh, uh, sand were tested in a shear box 6 cm into 6 cm and the following results were obtained normal load uh, is given 100 200 300 400 and peak shear load 90 181 270 362 ultimate shear load 55 152 277 300 determine the angle of shearing resistance of the sand the dense and the loose state so for both the state you have to consider why both the state means here it is given two conditions one is peak shear load and other one is ultimate shear load okay so here uh, this peak shear stress that is uh, uh, related to the uh, compacted state uh, dense state and uh, other one that is uh, ultimate shear load that is uh, related to the loose state so you have to calculate c and um, uh, uh, not uh, c because it is a sand uh, um, there is no cohesion only friction so you have to calculate only uh, phi value for both the cases how to do the same thing again you have to uh, draw uh, the graph uh, normal load versus the uh, shear load this is not stress this is uh, load okay this is load shear load so how to draw the normal loads are given 100 uh, for 100 what is the um, peak shear load that is 90 so for 100 uh, mark this is a 90 and next for 200 that is for 200 that is 181 um, okay this is a graph uh, this is uh, for uh, peak okay this is for peak Okay, so now for 200, uh, that is 181 and for 300, it is uh, 270 almost here and for 400, uh, 362. Okay, uh, so next is... Um, uh, ultimate shear load you have to calculate so again uh, the normal load is 100 and uh, now shear load is uh, 55 uh, so here 55 next is um, 200 for 200 it is uh, around uh, what is that 152 so here uh, 152 somewhere here and for uh, 300 that is uh, uh, 277 okay uh, correct no 277 uh, so just see here uh, this uh, graph is not proper uh, and for uh, 400 that is uh, 300 uh, for here this is 300 okay so this is uh, actually it has to go here 277 for uh, 300 it is uh, 277 so here it comes to 50 it is not 277 it is around 230 okay this point is uh, uh, not 277 it is almost 237 okay here this is 237 and this is uh, correct 270
ओके नाउ इट हैज टू कम और स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दिस पॉइंट ओनली बिकॉज दिस इज सैंड सो दैट सैंड दर इज नो क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन इज जीरो सो फाइंड द एंगल ओके वंस इफ यू गेट दैट एंगल यू विल गेट फॉर द डेंस स्टेट दैट इज फॉर द पीक स्टेट यू विल गेट फाइ इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी टू डिग्री एंड फॉर द लूज स्टेट दैट इज फॉर दिस अल्टीमेट लाइन that is 37 degree okay so uh, main thing you have to draw the graph between normal and uh, shear uh, low stress actually but uh, 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 you can find in terms of load also uh, no problem but final answer has to be divided by area but in this case there is uh, no c so you no need to divide it by 2 directly you can take the value of phi Okay, let us take one more example. A saturated specimen of cohesion less than was tested in triaxial compression, and the sample failed at a deviated stress of 482 kilonewton per meter square when the cell pressure was 100 kilonewton per meter square. Under the uh, drained conditions, find the effective angle of shearing resistance of sand. What would be the deviated stress and the major principal stress at failure for another identical specimen of sand if it is tested under cell pressure of 200 kilonewton per meter square? Okay, now it is mentioned it is a drained condition, so effective stresses are equal to the total stress. Okay, so that is sigma three dash. Dash is equal to sigma three here. Okay, uh, in the uh, drying condition, effective stresses are equal to the total stress. Otherwise, you have to deduct the pore water pressure. Here, no need to deduct the pore water pressure uh, because effective stresses are equal to the total stress. So, sigma three dash is equal to sigma three. That is given the first condition. At Hundred uh, kilonewton per meter square. Okay, now you have to calculate sigma one dash. How you can calculate? You have deviated stress value. You have sigma three value. So uh, we know the formula sigma one dash or sigma one is equal to sigma three plus sigma d or sigma three dash plus sigma d. What is sigma three dash? That is hundred and sigma d is equal to four eighty two. It is given, so it becomes for a five eighty two kilonewton per meter square. Once, if you know sigma one and sigma three, you can calculate what is phi. What is the formula? Sigma one dash is equal to sigma three tan square alpha. Alpha is forty five plus phi by two. Plus two c tan alpha, but this is a cohesion less soil, so c is equal to zero. So only the first term will be there. That is sigma one dash is equal to sigma three dash into tan square forty five plus phi dash by two. Okay, substitute the value. Sigma one dash is equal to phi eighty two. That is equal to sigma three dash is hundred into tan square of forty five plus phi dash by two. Simplify this. Only one unknown will get phi dash is equal to forty five degree. Okay, this is the first condition. Let us say take the second condition. In that, it is given um, what would be the deviated stress you have to calculate, and also the major principal stress at failure for another identical specimen of sand if it is tested under cell pressure of 200. Now, cell pressure sigma three dash is equal to 200. You have to calculate what is the uh, major principal stress sigma one dash, and what is deviated uh, deviated stress sigma d. We have found. Formula sigma one dash that is equal to sigma three dash tan square forty five plus phi dash by two that is substitute sigma three dash is two hundred into tan square forty five plus phi that value calculated is forty five. Um, Okay, so forty five divided by two will get one one six zero kilonewton per meter square. You uh, once if you have sigma one and sigma three value, you can calculate deviated stress. Deviated stress is sigma one dash minus. Uh, sorry, yeah, sigma um, uh, d is equal to sigma one dash minus sigma three dash. Sigma one dash is equal to one one six zero minus sigma d is uh, uh, sigma three dash is Two hundred, so we'll get nine sixty kilonewton per meter square. 
okay i hope all of you understood very simple you should know only the terms and some uh, equations that is always you have to remember thank you